Good afternoon, welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together, wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're turning through the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 11, but before we read our passage, as always, let's pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your word, and we pray that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to believe what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke 11, verse 37. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him. So he went in and reclined at table. The Pharisee was astonished to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools! Did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give as alms those things that are within. And behold, everything is clean for you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb and neglect justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves and people walk over them without knowing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying these things you insult us also. And he said, Woe to you lawyers also, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tomb of the prophets whom your fathers killed, so you are witnesses, and you consent to the deeds of your fathers, for they killed them and you build their tombs. Therefore, also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation." Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. And he went away from there. The scribes and the Pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak about many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. You know, Jesus is probably one of the worst house guests. Have you ever noticed that in the Gospels? You know, often we find Jesus being invited to someone's house for dinner, and everyone ends up upset with him. Even if he's not the main guest, he comes to a dinner table, and everyone ends up upset over something. You know, before we come to the meaning of the words which will be kind of cursory. One of the things that's really striking about this passage is how much it flies in the face of much of what Christendom thinks. You will often hear Christians saying things like, Jesus is tender. Jesus is loving. Jesus is always kind. And so Christians must be too. Christians must not be offensive. Christians, in their witness, must always be soft and gentle. I can remember during uh, COVID at one point having someone say to me that whenever Christians act, they ought never to make an offense to anyone whatsoever. That's our witness to the world, is not being offensive. I can remember watching a a documentary put together by some professors who claimed to be Christians, of whom at least one of them was a homosexual. And I I won't name them, 
But one of the things that they said in the very conclusion, one of the most esteemed professors in this documentary at the end said was at the end of the day, what we are asking is for the church to begin to treat people the way Jesus would. And what he meant by that is to show love and kindness equally to everyone, no matter how they lived. Well, this passage flies in the face of all of that. I mean, just imagine, what would you think if, if one of our preachers stood up and actually said the things that Jesus says in this passage? If he went to someone's house and said these things, or if he said them in a congregational meeting, or if he said, from, said them from the pulpit, even reading these things feels offensive. And yet this is what Jesus said. This is the living and abiding word of God. And it is here for a very express reason. So this, verse 37 to 54, is effectively the express illustration of the reality of everything we've been talking about from verse 14 through to 36. About the need to trust, hear, believe the word of Christ. And immediately we're confronted with the Pharisees and the lawyers who refuse to do that. And so Jesus goes to their house for dinner. And they accuse him over something unbelievably pathetic, which isn't even in the word of God. They were disgusted with him. They were astonished. They marveled at him because he didn't wash before dinner. He wasn't breaking the law. He was breaking their rules, but he wasn't breaking the law of God. And Jesus' response highlights something for us. It highlights for us that the Pharisees and the lawyers were missing the word of God which was being proclaimed in their midst. Because they were infatuated with their own thoughts. They were blind, deaf, pitiable, and wretched. And so Jesus says, you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup, but the inside is filthy. So you're focusing on the outside, but there's something wrong on the inside. You need your heart to be cleansed. And then he goes into these woes. And just very quickly says, woe to the Pharisees. Why? Because they focus upon the minute things and neglect the great things. Do both. He says, woe to you, Pharisees. Why? Because you love the praise of men. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you're basically dead people. Even though you're alive and walking around, no one cares about you. No one really cares about you because you are unmarked graves. Now, if that was all we had, that would be bad enough and that would ruin a dinner party, right? I mean, no one's ever said that at a dinner party at my place, but it would be pretty awkward if someone did. But one of the lawyers stands up, and you can just imagine the picture, right? Oh, man. I mean, yeah, those Pharisees are pretty bad, Jesus, but it kind of sounds like, you know, you're not just speaking about that. It, you know, it sounds a little bit like you're speaking about us too, Jesus. So can you just clarify for everybody that us lawyers are good, but, you know, the Pharisees are bad? And Jesus says, woe to you lawyers. You put burdens upon people and don't take them off. In other words, they tell them what they have to do. They tell them what the law requires, but they don't show them the way to have their burden removed by pointing them to Christ. He says to them, your fathers killed all the prophets and you celebrate them. Therefore, you're just as guilty as they are. And then he says to them, you've been given the key of knowledge, the word of God. But you don't actually use it to enter yourself. In fact, to make it even worse, you lock the door so that other people can't come in. And what's the response? Well, you'd hope the response would be the Pharisees and the lawyers would hear the word of Christ, repent, return, and seek the lover of their souls, right? But no, they don't. Verse 53, as he goes away, the Pharisees and scribes begin to press him hard, to provoke him, to speak about many things, lying in wait to catch him. It's the illustration of the exact thing Luke's been talking about and Jesus has been saying, right? If, if the light bulb's dead, there's no light. 
the Pharisees and lawyers, there's no light bulb. It's not even that it's dark. There's just no light bulb. There's no lamp at all. There's no light. It's just darkness. So they cannot see and they cannot teach and they're spiritually dead. But let me tell you, this passage wasn't just given for us to ridicule and critique the Pharisees and the lawyers. It's given for us. And so the ultimate question we have to ask ourselves is, are we the same? You see, we can become experts in the law. We can become experts at living. We can become experts in religiosity and Christianity and miss out on Christ. And the great question is, will we have Christ? Will we receive him through the word? Or will we become experts of religion? And meanwhile, be unmarked graves. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we, we want to learn from the Pharisees and the lawyers and the words of Christ that we might know Christ and help others to know him too. Help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.